Hey guys, it's Matt. Welcome to Speed Tutor, and I wanted to create a mobile login screen which you could create, input the numbers, be able to cancel them away, and then be able to input a code that you want and be able to open up the phone depending on what you want to use. This entire project and all the sprites will be available on my Patreon for you to get access to it and I will put everything separately linked. So do be sure to check out all the links in the description for all the best sales and savings and all the rest of the great Patreon content. So here we are in a brand new scene in Unity and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to 2D mode, right click, UI and I'm just going to create a brand new canvas. I'm just going to rename this to the phone canvas that I'm going to use. On the phone canvas I'm going to set to scale with screen height and size and I'll do the reference resolution of 1920 by 1080. I'm just going to press F to zoom in on that content. Then I'm going to right click and choose UI and choose image and then I'm going to name this phone shell and it's just the UI sprite which will be available on my Patreon which will be the smartphone sprite here which just like that. What I'm going to do is then add that to the slot here. I might have the width of about 500 and maybe 1000. I mean something like that works. I'm just going to put that into the center of our workspace here. Then from there what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click the canvas again, choose UI and then choose panel. And then my panel is really really big. I'm just going to call this the phone login panel. And then what I like to do is I'm just going to scale this down and it's just the very inside of that space that we've got inside the phone. Then on the panel what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the image because this is just going to be the container which contains all of our elements. Then I'm going to right click that, choose UI and choose image and then on the image I'm just going to call this our background mask which is going to be a mask of the background just so we can create a funky background. Then I'm going to click the pivot point, hold alt and scale this out into the actual box we have. I'm going to add a component and call it mask because I'm going to mask off that area. Then I'm going to right click that mask, put a UI, choose image, and then I'm just going to leave this as maybe the background sprite. And then in here, I'll just add the background sprite that I want. I'm just going to scale that background sprite up and you can see that it's now masked just to that area like I wanted, then that's created. I'm going to right click the panel again, choose UI and choose a, another panel. I'm going to call this one our main text area. And again, I'm going to remove the main image component. Then I'm going to right click this, choose UI and choose image. And I'm just going to have this as a lock icon. So we're just designing how the phone should look. That's perfectly fine like that. I might have it as 25 by 25. We will zoom in and I'm just going to put this towards the top and keep it along our center line. I'm going to right click the main text area again, then have this as just text with text mesh pro. You might want to import the text mesh essentials just to get this going. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a title called enter passcode. I'm going to drag this whole thing, scale it out, set the text size to about 25. And you can create, in my case, I can create a emergency style button. So I'm just going to add a button with text mesh pro, put that in the center and just rename this to emergency. And we're going to create an input field to be able to use to input the actual passcode that we're going to have. So I'll add a new input field and then I'll just call this key input field. And then I'm just going to again, drag this up and maybe that size will do. We can open up the text area and what we can do is remove the placeholder go to the text and we can just put in a number there and just put it center centered. You could increase the size if you really want just to make it more visible. But if you want, if you go on the key input field, what you can do is that you can actually just untick the image just so that we don't see that. So it's more blended with our background. And there we've got our input field, which will accept any text that we want. Now we want to create our keys. And in this case, I'm going to right click the panel again, choose UI, and then I'm going to choose another panel and then call this our key container because it's going to contain all the keys that we're going to use. I'm going to remove the image from there. I'm going to add a new component and call this a grid layout group because this is going to control how each of the buttons are going to be positioned exactly where we want them. But now we need to create a bunch of buttons to be able to use them. Now, what we want to do is right click UI and then button with Text Mesh Pro. So in this case, we've got just a default UI sprite, but what I might use is in this case, a knob, because I wanted it to look circular. 
and you can leave everything by default, but you could have the normal color. I wanted a sort of turquoise blue like that, and I'll maybe reduce the opacity to about 0 0.2, 0 0.3, something like that. And then you can also set the highlighted color. I'll just reduce the opacity to the same level just so that they both look the same. Then I can go into the text and I'll just rename this to, let's say one. We can scale up the size. Maybe I'll have that as a size of 40. And maybe I want the text as white in this case here. Now I'm gonna rename this to key one. Then I can save that and you can see here, I've got my keys. And then what I can do is I can duplicate this as many times as I want and it duplicates it into a grid. And most phones would have 12 keys realistically, give or take. So we've got key 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Now you'd see that they're positioned in a weird way where we might not like. So if we go back on our key container, you can see that the cell size we can keep at 100. We could have the spacing of 15 by 15 because we might want to space them out a little bit. We can keep the start corner as the upper left. We can keep the star axis as horizontal. We can put them at middle center. And then you could have the constraint as make sure that it's a fixed column count and have that as three, just to make sure that they're always uniform exactly where you want them. And then you can also add padding. So say we can have the top padding as say 80, and that just pushes it down a little bit. Depending on what you have, you can reduce this depending on what works. So in each of our cases, you could rename these just to each of the keys that you're going to use. So in this case, I'm just gonna rename them to key two, and then I'll open up the text, and I'll just name that to two. Yes, this is a little bit of a slow process, but I will leave you to change each of the keys based on this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, however you want those to be. Now I've created all these buttons, but as you can see, I've gone all the way to 12, but really in our middle one here, number 11, we might want to do that as zero, because that's usually the one on the phone and we'll rename that separately. The one on the left here, which is key 10, and key 10 is usually maybe a cancel or something like that, so we can create an X. We'll right click key 10, go UI, choose image. I'm gonna remove Text Mesh Pro, and I'm gonna choose key 10, and I'm going to add my cross sprite here. And then I'm going to scale this down, maybe 40 by 40 to fit it in that box nicely. And then I'm going to select key 10, remove the image from there. Then on key 12, we can untick the image component, and we'll rename this just to OK. Maybe I'll add this to bold. So now we've got very much the basis of our basic UI with all our buttons in the grid layout. And now we're going to write the script to be able to control inputting and controlling whether we want to log in. So we're going to right click. I'm just going to create new C sharp script and just call this the phone lock manager, something like that. Open up in Visual Studio. Now when we're here, I'm just gonna add some headers as we go along just to make it look nicer in the inspector. Then we need square brackets, serialize field, private, string, because we're gonna compare strings in this case. And then we're gonna have phone passcode because what is the phone passcode gonna be and what are we going to compare? Then we're gonna have to limit exactly what the keys are going to be able to do. So we don't want to input too many or we'll break the system. So again, we'll have square brackets, serialize field. We'll have private integer and we'll name this character limit. And we'll set that equal to four for now because we maybe just want to input a four digit key. Then we'll have a private integer of the character input count because we're going to keep hold of that and remember exactly how many we've inputted. Then we need now UI fields. So we need the reference to the actual UI we're going to use. So we need square brackets, serialize field again. And we're going to need to use the text mesh pro namespace. So we're going to say using TM pro. And then for the UI fields, because we want to access that input field is that we're going to say TM pro underscore input field. And then I'm just going to call this my key input field. And then in this case, I like to use events to do some thing once we've completed the actual option. And up here in my example, I had a way to show you that we've got the wrong password and we're going to come under that when we get there. So we want to do something when we press a button. So each of our buttons can just be separate. So we can have public void. We can call this key button and have this as string and as key as our parameter. So we're going to say that if that the character input count is less than our key input field dot character limit then is that say that key input field dot text which is the text box 
of the input field plus equals the key that we've actually just input. And then we'll actually say the character input count plus plus. So we'll just add one to it. So each time we press the key, we're checking if the actual count that we're counting up with the one we've inputted is more than the input field. Because if you can see on our input field here, we actually have a character limit which we can specify by default. So we limit it in the actual editor. But when if we inputted stuff without it limiting it in code, we could add more to it and it would just visually look wrong. Then what we want to do is be able to do the enter button. So if we want to check if it's right, we want to say public void enter button and then we don't need any parameters in this case if key input field dot text is equal equal to the phone passcode at any point and in this case i am comparing the input field to the passcode so you could actually hold the key input field in another variable if you want to control it outside of the ui but here's just an example and then in this case we can run our event and if not we can say else if it is actually wrong, we can say that key input field dot text is equal to the wrong password prompt in this case. Now you can see I wanted to do an event, go back to where we've started writing our fields. We can write square bracket serialized field private. And then we need a new namespace at the top called using unity engine dot events. Now our private field can be unity event. And we'll just call this our unlock event because that's when the phone will unlock. We can just copy the unlock event here and say that that's our event. I want to say the unlock event dot invo. So we're going to then run whatever event we have. Up here for the password, we can write square bracket serialized field private string wrong passcode message as an example. And then we can just say in quotes wrong passcode. We'll copy that field we've just created and then set the key input field to that message that we want to show. And then we want to create a quick thing for a cancel button. So you want to delete everything. So we'll call this cancel button. And then we'll just have a new method called reset input field. And then below here, we'll just have normal void reset input field. We can say that key input field dot text is equal to null because it will now be empty. And character input count is also equal to zero because we're just setting that back to its default. Now we can save that script, go back into Unity. I'm gonna right click here, create a new empty game object and call this our phone. Login manager, right click and reset that phone manager, add our phone lock manager script. You can see that our phone passcode is here, whatever our passcode message will be. And we need to add our key input field here. Then I want my password to be maybe one, two, three, four. Then in the events, I'm just going to add two new events. And what I'm going to do is I want my first, which is the phone login panel. I'm going to have that as game object and then set active, which will be false. So when we log in, I'm just going to get rid of this screen. And what I'll do is I'll just duplicate that login panel and just call this main screen as an example. I'm just going to get rid of everything inside here. A main screen will just have one random image in the center. And I'm just going to turn that off so you can't see it. Then go back into the phone login manager and say that the phone main screen, the game object is going to be set active is true. Then we need to actually link up all of our buttons. So we can open up key container. I'm going to grab all the keys that we have and I'm going to add an on click event to them. Then I'm going to go from one to nine and include zero. And just, I'm going to need to add something in here. So I'm going to add the phone logon manager, go to the method, go to the phone lock manager and go to the, and add in the key button. And each of these would have a different value based on whatever you want to do. And the only difference here is the key cancel will we'll add the phone logon manager and just go to the phone manager and just choose the cancel button. We'll go to the enter key and we'll, again, we'll add the manager, go to the actual script and just choose enter button. Now, seeing as that all of our keys have a different value based on the actual key button method, and cancel has its own and enter has its own there. And one thing that we should do in our start method just before we start is void start. And then we'll say that our key input field dot character limit 
is equal to the actual character limit that we've specified. So then the actual input field automatically sets it for us. But if you didn't have that, you can see on the key input field down here, the character limit, you can specify what you want, because if it starts default at zero, when you input stuff, it won't actually show it. Now, when we press play, you can see we can start inputting some details and now we can add any more. We can cancel that. We can add another number here. And then you can press OK and you can see that it's the wrong passcode. But my number was one, two, three, four. Press OK. And there you have it. We've been able to create our UI, create a simple login, be able to detect whether we've inputted the correct value and be able to cancel and enter and have different outcomes in it. So I hope you found this useful and you can find this entire thing on my Patreon along with 180 different scripts, assets and projects you cannot find anywhere else. Be sure to check out all the links in the description for the best sales, savings and everything that you can find in game dev. Be sure to check out my awesome assets on the Unity Asset Store and on my website for massive savings. But a big thank you to all my patrons, including Peter Stein and Raheem Whitaker, Manos Barakas, Walter Dunson, Rennie Leisure, Alyssa Faden, Daniel Gesserjank, Hush, Thomas Merceleski, Callum Murray, Mark Rondu, Marvin Church, Hoglan Nigoyan, Curry for Life Gaming, Sung G Park, Brandon Mannion, Austin Certain, G Y Quaid, Duan Cooper, James McCarthy, Johan Lixon, Leslie Winter, Heather Fletcher, Mark Vacon, Andre Ferreira, Larry M2, Dylan C, Pablo, Liam Gray, Warblin Lynn, Dennis Foreman, Lemu, Shane Finley, Cal Frederick, Shatibi Mariam, and FH. And a big thank you to everybody else who comes to watch the video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Cheers.